So Elgato has just released their brand new Elgato Wave DX, which is a really great microphone at $100. And it complements the Elgato Wave XLR really well. So being able to use this in your audio is very amazing and powerful, but maybe you don't understand how to use filters in EQ. I'm gonna show you how to do that at a very basic level and it just gets your filter and EQ working to where your voice sounds better at literally a few clicks. Now, Elgato released a VST3 plugin called Elgato EQ. It's a very basic program. It's not for the professionals, even though professionals can use it and be very happy with the results. They've also put out Elgato RNN Denoiser, which is essentially removing noise and background sounds from your audio without needing the RTX series, 20 series and 30 series graphics cards because Previously, there was an NVIDIA broadcast noise removal by NVIDIA and Elgato, which it needed a 30 series or 20 series graphics cards. With this new one, RNN Denoiser, it uses your CPU, so anyone can use this and have similar power to what you could do with NVIDIA broadcast noise removal. I'll show you more about what that is. Now, if you do want to grab a $100 microphone with the Elgato Wave DX and the Wave XLR to get full power with your Wavelength software, I'll leave a link down in the description. But let's check out and see how to add filters and EQ to make this microphone sound even better. Now, the Elgato Wave DX is a very flat profile when it comes to any audio EQ and filters. It's a very natural sounding microphone without any filters added to it. And that's done on purpose. Because Elgato has teamed up with the professionals at Lewitt Audio, the very professional audio technicians, the microphone's gonna sound really great and true to what your voice would sound. Which is good and bad. Good because you can customize it to whatever you want it to sound like and you can literally have full range of motion when it comes to adding filters and EQ. The bad thing is you have to add filters and EQ which isn't really a bad thing in the first place. So let's take a look and see how we can edit this so that we can make this microphone sounding much better. Not that it was bad in the first place. The first thing you need to do is download Elgato EQ and Elgato RN Denoiser, which is in the description down below. Go to Elgato's download page and download it. You just select the Elgato Wave XLR and you can see those downloads there. Once you install it into your VST3 folder, which is located in your common files, then go to your Elgato Wavelength software, click the settings button, and then go ahead and click on audio effects. It'll show you the location of your VST3 folder, so make sure you did install it into this folder. And then click scan plugin folders, and it'll show you those VST3 plugins that you just downloaded. Keep in mind, you can also use these for Adobe Audition or any other audio app that uses VST3 plugins. So this isn't just limited to Elgato Wavelength software. Okay, let's get to customizing this. First, what you wanna do is make sure that you're monitoring your microphone so you can hear what it sounds like by unmuting this button here. So if it's not crossed off, you can hear it or you, at least you should be able to hear it. Next, click on the filters button here or audio effects, click the plus button and let's go to Elgato and click Elgato EQ. Keep in mind, this is in beta, so there are going to be a couple glitches and bugs with the UI but this is an unofficial release of Elgato EQ. So the layout here is very basic and is very powerful too. Even though this isn't technically for professionals, this is for the beginners who don't either know how to EQ their microphone or just simply don't know how it all works. This is gonna be very basic and easy and really you only need three bands here. It's created three by default, but I'm gonna click it and delete it because I don't wanna create those ones and they're not fully customizable as opposed to the ones you create yourself. So let's go ahead and create one by double clicking the line here and I'm gonna do the same thing for the top or the highs, I should say, the high frequencies. And then what we're gonna do here, let's start with the bass. I'm gonna increase the bass significantly so you can hear a difference and that does make a huge difference. With it selected, I can scroll with my mouse and I can make the curve much wider. You can hear the difference in my voice as well. I'm gonna again drag this down, let's scroll down and let's just make it a bit more fine tuned. And I wanna target a little bit of the bass here. This is the rumble or sub bass. So this kind of makes your voice sound a little bit more radio-like, if that's even a way you can say it. My voice can be typically in the mid to sometimes highs. So I like to boost the basses a little bit just to make my voice sound a little more pleasing. Now you can hear that a lot of my mid tones here, which is the boxy sounds, it's a bit of a muddy part of the voice. So I'm gonna drag this down and I'm just going to make it a little more focused by scrolling and uh, let's just 
And that's gonna sound a lot nicer. If I go ahead and double click it, it's going to deactivate it so you can hear the difference with and without it. Double click it again and it'll activate it again. Now with the highs, this can vary. If you have a higher voice or more of the shh and sh type of sounds, those can be pretty harsh. So the way you can do is essentially a de without using the de but do it in this Elgato EQ, is you can drag this down and my S, H and S sounds are gonna sound a lot less harsh. So if I drag that down and I'm just going to make this even more exaggerated so you can hear the difference when I say sh and s sounds. And then if I drag that down, you can hear s and sh are much more harsher. If I drag it up, you can also hear that a bit more harsh as well. But this would only really help if you had a, a deeper voice and a more muddied sounding voice. I know that does sound a bit strange, but this will help clarify your voice by increasing it rather than decreasing it. It just depends on your voice. With mine, it can be a little harsh, so I'm actually gonna drag it down a little bit, and I'm just gonna adjust the curve a little bit so it's not adjusting too much of my high frequencies because I don't wanna lose all of it. So this is the basics, and this is really all you need to know as a beginner, and I'm gonna leave it at that because it's great. Next thing I'm gonna do, or oh, I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna click on the audio effects here, I'm gonna click the plus button, and I'm gonna go to Elgato and click Elgato RND Noiser. I'm gonna deactivate it for just a second. Now Algata is going to have the official release further down the line, uh, be able to choose the different strengths that this will uh, take effect. Essentially Algata RN noise denoiser is going to use your CPU rather than your GPU to add NVIDIA broadcast noise removal or equivalent to that to your microphone. You don't need an NVIDIA RTX 20 series or 30 series graphics card anymore with this new plugin from Algato, which is super nice because previously with their Algato NVIDIA broadcast noise removal software, it was only uh, dependent on using an NVIDIA 20 series or 30 series graphics card. With this one, it uses a CPU so you can use any computer to do this, which is amazing. So you can hear what my voice sounds like without it, but let's turn it on and it doesn't change much to my voice, but it does do a lot with the background. Now, if I turn it off real quick and I'm not going to talk. That takes out the sound of my computer, which it's a very big computer and it does put on a little bit of audio with the fans. So it makes quite a significant difference, especially when I'm typing and talking. So let's do that real quick. So if I type, you can hear that it's not very prominent. You can hear it a little bit. You're not gonna get rid of everything, but let's turn it off. And I'm gonna show you where this really shines. So you can hear it a lot more obvious now and it's more prominent and more annoying. Then if I turn it on and I continue to type, That's pretty amazing. Let's take it a step further. One of my fans, I should say. This is blowing into the microphone. It's probably pretty loud. Let's turn it to full blast because why not? Whoa, that's a very big difference from medium to full. That's crazy. So you can hear it. That's pretty amazing. And even when I'm talking, it's taking out the audio of the fan quite significantly. It's not gonna be perfect, obviously, that technology is still really powerful and it's still got a way to go, but you know, it's amazing. And if I turn it off, you can hear the fan is pretty annoying and right in the microphone. But if I turn it back on, it sounds pretty good and I can be a sweaty gamer with a fan blowing me down. So I'm not a sweaty gamer in the end, but I'm playing like I'm sweaty. Now, one thing to note, and it's this is very important, is to make sure that you have the correct order of your audio effects, because it works from top to bottom, working in priority. So it takes the first one, and it works on that before it works onto the next filter. So with Algata RN and Denoiser, have it first, because it's gonna take out all the bad audio and the stuff you don't want. And then Algata EQ is gonna be applied to just that audio that makes it into the microphone. So you don't wanna be adding EQ to your microphone with all the noise that you have in your room. And then the RMD noise is gonna to have to work harder to get all of that audio taken out because the EQ is going to adjust some of the lows. It might bring some of the quiet stuff up and bring the, the, the highs or the high frequencies down. And that's gonna mess with some of the noise gates that you might have or audio filters. So have your noise gate first, have your RN noise removal first, and then you have your EQ at the end. Now I do have a very in-depth video on how to do all of this if you're 
let's say a beginner trying to figure out more on how to add filters and EQ to your microphone, or you're a professional and you just wanna know what filters are best in Elgato Wavelink. That video is in the top right in the cards. It's helped a lot of people and it's got quite a lot of attention. So people really appreciate it because it supports VSTs uh, and also just shows you how to go step by step on how to add filter and EQ to your microphone to sound even better. It goes way more than just the basic video that I've just done. Even though the Elgato EQ plugin, the VST3, it's still really powerful and gets you most of the way there. So yeah, there you go. If you want the gear, links are down below. Feel free to check it out. I'll see you next time. But until then, make something great. And upgrade your audio with filters and EQ, but also the Elgato Wave DX. I've switched it out from my Shure SM7B. I have a video on that in the top right in the cards. I like this microphone more.